this is the title block of a map of uh, the area uh, to the uh, west of Washington, D.C. Uh, topographical survey by the party in charge of Henry L. Whiting, Assistant U.S. Coast Survey. Field work executed during parts of June and July 1861. Uh, this is when the Confederate Army was knocking on the doorstep to uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, by F.W. Doerr and uh, Cleveland Rockwell, uh, U.S. Coast Survey. Uh, we were the primary mapping agency for the Union armies for probably the first year or two of the Civil War. I say we, uh, I'm still, I, I'm an old coast surveyor. That's, uh, Battle of Port Royal Sound. Uh, this is a nautical chart of Port Royal. Uh, actually, uh, the hydrography was done once again by John Mayfit, who was one of the uh, both best uh, Confederate naval officers, but uh, this data and information was used to plan the operations. Uh, Port Royal Sound was the first great uh, Union naval victory. It established a Union uh, ship base on the, on the coast of South Carolina between uh, Charleston and, and uh, Savannah. Uh, this is where the Union Navy operated out of for, for uh, the, the duration of the, or the, the South Atlantic blockading squadron for the duration of the Civil War. Uh, well, anyway, Charles Boutel uh, accompanied, he was considered the, the uh, nearly indispensable man on the expedition uh, that the Union Navy uh, sent down to uh, Port Royal. Uh, he, he sounded out and marked the channel because the Confederates had removed all the buoys and all aids to navigation. And then he and other coast surveyor, surveyors piloted uh, Union ships into the sound for the attack of Forts Walker and Beauregard. This is one of the first major uh, Union victories and established, and once again established a, a, one of the, the primary ship bases. Uh, this is a tactical planning map by Coast Survey showing locations of Forts Walker and Beauregard. Uh, I don't know if I, is there a pointer here of any kind or? I guess, okay. Yeah, it'd be hard to see here, but anyway. Uh, Fort Walker, this was the primary fort. This is one they attacked. And it's Fort Beauregard uh, on the other side of the bay. Union ships came in, they went in a big circle. On the coming from, from the uh, north to south, this fort was designed to, to uh, withstand an attack coming from the sea. And they just had, it was almost free shots into the uh, uh, Fort Walker, and, and uh, the, the fort soon capitulated. Now that Fort Beauregard totally exposed, and they went through, and the Union. Uh, within a month of taking those forts and, and uh, all of the blue on this is uh, uh, Union controlled territory at the time. Once again, produced by Charles Boutel. Okay, a draftsman that uh, Boutel had with him uh, was, uh, uh, well, E. Willen Booker. Uh, he, uh, this is a mock-up of plans and views of rebel defenses on the coast of South Carolina. Uh, these were all the little forts that uh, were various places along these waterways. This is just a, a the, the, the mock-up of Fort Walker. Uh, the ships that are here, uh, the Coast Survey at that time, uh, it's hard to see here, this little ship was probably the Vixen, the inshore ship. Uh, it's not real clear, but uh, uh, that was the Coast Survey vessel that was attached to uh, the Union Squadron at that time. And then this is the final uh, printed version uh, that was uh, put out to the public. Charleston Harbor, uh, although we had charts already existing of the of the harbor, uh, they were used for tactical purposes throughout the uh, for the next uh, three years. Uh, shows a position. This one is a uh, shows the positions of the rebel batteries in 1863. Uh, the channel to the north here. Coming in. This was called Mafet's Channel initially because John Mafet had discovered it. Uh, that's uh, Sullivan's Island that, the, that it's running parallel to. Uh, this particular chart shows it as Mafet's, uh, Mafet's Channel or, or Sullivan's Island Channel. Uh, the name started to change uh, by the end of the war. It was a totally different name. And this is a colored chart showing different kinds of uh, land use. Uh, this was probably hand penciled in, but regardless, sort of an early form of GIS applied to military needs. Uh, each of the colors represented a different type of land cover or different cultural use. And then uh, you all see the movie Glory. Uh, the 
uh, what was it, 50, 54th, uh, 54th Massachusetts Volunteer Infantry. Uh, uh, this is actually at the time of the, the uh, 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 Fort Wagner. These are the iron position of the ironclad shooting into the fort. These are, this, these are the Union uh, works that were leading up to the, to, to the fort, the slow siege. Uh, but ultimately they took it, then they ended up taking Battery Greg as well at the uh, tip of, of the uh, uh, peninsula there. Okay, this was the Coast Survey Steamer Bib. It was the primary hydrographic survey vessel of the South Atlantic Blockading Squadron. I had the Vixen a little earlier, but the Bib was the ship that stayed with the uh, uh, South Atlantic uh, uh, Navy uh, Squadron uh, for the rest of the duration of the war. It performed many reconnaissance missions, provided pilot each for Union vessels and engaged in combat operations. Uh, it was representative of Coast Survey hydrographic crews on the southeast and Gulf Coast and along the Mississippi River. It had Coast Surveyors on the Mississippi River as well. Uh, Charles O. Boutel uh, became a confidant of Admirals DuPont and Dahlgren and was commanding officer of this vessel for most of his time on station. Uh, this particular uh, painting is in, I guess, the museum at Greenville, South Carolina, I believe. Uh, John Ross Key painted it. John Ross Key was a grandson of Francis Scott Key. He'd worked for the Coast Survey uh, for a number of years prior to the war, but he went south. He's one of seven uh, uh, folks that went south out of the Coast Survey. Uh, sort of interesting looking at this painting, if you, the vantage point was about right here on the chart, and he's looking down this way, and Fort Sumter, well, it's, I can't make it out on this, but it's somewhere out in here. But regardless, everything is, is geometrically correct on this. If you, if you compare the chart to the painting, you can see exactly where, it, well, not maybe not exactly where he's standing, but probably within about 100 yards one way or the other. And you get the, the exact same view looking at the chart as you see on the painting. Uh, here you see the gunboats firing on Fort Sumter in the middle and uh, still looks like they're firing on uh, Battery Brig at the tip. This would have been August 1863 or so. Again, this is the final. I've, I've inundated you with Charleston, but it was a major port and it was a major effort of the Union uh, Navy. Uh, final map produced at the end of the, uh, after Charleston had been evacuated in 1860, uh, 1865. On this particular map, uh, the bib had gone in and it was surveying the obstructions, uh, what sort of, uh, where the fortifications were. And in this particular instance, uh, the, the Confederates had developed uh, what they called torpedoes, today we call them mines. The bib actually had one blow up underneath its bow right here. Uh, nobody was injured, fortunately, and the ship wasn't hurt too bad. It sprayed a frame or two, but uh, didn't do much else. Okay, we're moving to the Mississippi River. The, uh, uh, once again, the, the Civil War was a, a uh, continental war, if you will. Uh, this is one of it, when they started up the river to New Orleans, uh, David Dixon Porter, the uh, half-brother or step-brother of, of Admiral Farragut at the time, he convinced them that he wanted to try out these mortar boats on the Mississippi. Okay, so the, the tree branches, that's for uh, basically camouflage, uh, they put them up, up against the bank. So uh, what Porter invented here on the Mississippi is something that's used today by all, virtually all, all artillery groups, uh, indirect artillery fire based on geodetic surveying. Uh, this was used during the siege of Fort Jackson and Fort, Sil Fort St. Philip, and these uh, defended the, the uh, approaches to New Orleans. Uh, made use of Coast Survey crews and pre-existing survey work to position the mortar boats and lock shells into Fort Jackson. Uh, this is just mortar boats working at night uh, uh, prior to Farragut's fleet passing the forts and taking New Orleans. It was dangerous work. Uh, there were Confederate uh, sharpshooters that uh, took shots at both the surveyors and then the mortar boats as they were along the, uh, uh, tied up along the shore. And this is a uh, map of the results of the mortar fire on what was Fort Jackson, which was on the, uh, I guess the, I don't know, the south or west bank of the Mississippi. All of those pockmarks are where mortar shells hit. Uh, they actually fired 16,000 shells into the fort, but they had uh, 
proximity fuse that were defective and accordingly uh, some of them just landed in the mud and they didn't not all of them burst so there would have been a lot worse if they would have better artillery they would have done a lot worse uh, a lot more damage to the this particular fort uh, commander porter uh, who became the second admiral of the navy after the war uh, following his half-brother uh, he wrote debates concerning the battle of fort st philip and jackson uh, the results of our mortar practice here have exceeded anything I ever dreamed of, and for my success I am mainly indebted to the accuracy of positions marked down under Mr. Gertie's direction by Mr. Harris and Mr. Oldman's. They made a minute and complete survey from the jump, uh, which is just below Venice, to the forts, most of the time exposed to fire from shot and shell and from sharpshooters from the bushes. The position that every vessel was to occupy was marked by a white flag and we knew we yard the exact distance of the hole in the mortar from the forts. So once again, this is the first time Coast Surveyors uh, became uh, artillery orienteers in the uh, First World War and then artillery surveyors during the uh, Second World War. Uh, this is just a nautical chart of Mound City, uh, Illinois, which became a un was the Union Navy base up on the Ohio River, uh, right by Cairo, uh, Illinois. Uh, just so the Coast Survey worked on the interior rivers as well in the Gulf and the and the uh, uh, East Coast. Uh, this little map, uh, uh, Porter, well, the, the Union strategy, what they wanted to do was they didn't want to go by Vicksburg. Vicksburg had pipes that had all sorts of cannons and everything else on it, and this was the bottleneck on the Mississippi River. The Confederates continued to hold the river, or most of it, as long as they could hold Vicksburg. So Grant wanted to come, Grant and Sherman working in concert, wanted to come down the river. Somehow they wanted to take Vicksburg, such that this was neutralized. Uh, at first they didn't want to run their, their transports and ironclads past Vicksburg. So they said, well, Porter tries to say, okay, we're gonna go up Steel Bayou, and then uh, Deer Creek is up in here. We're gonna find our way to the Yazoo River, then come down the Yazoo River, unload our troops here, and come in through the back door. Well. That didn't work. They ended up getting getting uh, almost trapped in there because they had the Confederates cutting down trees behind the ironclads as they were going in there and shooting at the guys on deck. And so it ended up not being too good of a mission. But Porter wrote to Bates regardless. We are finding out new water courses every day and the wheels of our largest vessels pass even where a canoe never went before. And that's uh, Porter to Bates in uh, December of 18, or March of 1863. Uh, this map, uh, Alexander Strauss, a coast surveyor, accompanied uh, Porter on this particular trip. Uh, this map of Vicksburg, uh, ultimately, uh, Grant and Sherman and Porter, they all decided that, okay, we're just going to suck it up and go by uh, Vicksburg. They, uh, this map was made by coast surveyor uh, Clarence Findle. Uh, you have DeSoto Bend here and come down here. They tried to bypass it by building a, a canal across this peninsula. Uh, that didn't work. Uh, the water didn't fill it for some reason. So the transports ultimately went by and they landed south of Vicksburg, marched inland to Jackson, and then from Jackson they followed the railroad back to Vicksburg taking, taking the city. Um, but this particular map was uh, produced by, once again, Assistant Clarence Findle of the Coast Survey. Uh, he was so indispensable to Porter that he was assigned quarters on the flagship next to Porter's. This is an indication of, the, of what he experienced. Uh, yesterday, I was three miles beyond our pickets and within 600 yards of the enemy's batteries. I did not stop work till the cannonballs plowed up the ground within 20 feet of us. One of my men had his hat blown off by the wind of a ball and one struck the levee just under my plane table. I reckon about all of the inhabitants of Vicksburg were out after me. Uh, we, many our pickets, captured one captain who was heading off my retreat and I had a conversation with a boat which approached within 100 yards of my table. Now, a sort of understatement, tomorrow the Admiral will send a large force with me. Yeah, I think so. Um, this is the instrument that he was using, plane table and allotate. Uh, I don't know how many how many of here, you here are old enough that uh, your plane surveying course, you have to do a <laughs> plane table survey. Yeah, Chris and myself, that's it. That's, how old are you, Chris? <laughs> <I'm just about laughs> but that was <laughs> before aerial photography. That was the primary means of uh, of topographic mapping with with the uh, plane table and Allidade. Okay, uh, 
We've gone down the Mississippi, we've cleared it, now we're headed to the peninsula with McClellan. Uh, Union topographers on the peninsula, 1862.